What's up mga kasayans? So we're going to talk about the integumentary system and how the integumentary system protects the body from the outside world. So in this part, one of the examples of these body systems is the integumentary system, which consists of the hair, skin, and nail. Now the skin has layers. So the layers of the skin is the epidermis, dermis, and the hypodermis. So if you get two oranges, peel open one of the oranges, throw and squeeze both oranges, what do you think will happen to the fruit if you squeeze and throw them? Find out if your guess is correct. So the fruit peeling is like your skin. Your skin is a part of the integumentary system. It includes the hair, nails, and the sweat and oil glands. The integumentary system also protects your body from injuries. So the skin is the largest organ of the human body. It performs different functions. It acts as an excretory organ, a sense organ, and a temperature regulator. So here we have an example of skin receptors. So skin receptors that recognize heat, cold, pain, and touch. It shields your body from the ultraviolet rays or UV rays emitted from the sun and from microorganisms that can enter and harm the other body systems. It also protects you from the mechanical and physical injuries. The epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin. It has pores through which sweat and oil are excreted. Its surface consists of dead cells that are continually shed off and replaced by new cells. Now, do you notice that water simply slides past your skin when you take a bath? Water does not seep into the body because of a tough protein called keratin. Keratin waterproofs and protects the cells and tissues underneath. It is also the key component of your hair and nail. The epidermis also contains melanin, which is responsible for your skin color. Melanin shields you from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. So what happens when you stay under the sun for a long period of time? Your skin gets tanned. In such conditions, melanocytes, skin cells that produce melanin, block the UV rays. However, too much exposure to sunlight can cause sunburn or skin cancer. Here we have the dermis. The dermis is the middle layer of the skin. It is where nerve endings, blood vessels, sweat, and oil glands are present. Now, oil glands are attached to the hair follicles. So what roles do these glands play? The sweat gland is a coiled tube that secretes sweat. Sweat is a waste product excreted through the pores of the skin. Hence, the skin is an excretory organ. So when a person feels hot, blood vessel enlarges to allow more blood to flow, making skin reddish. The heat in the blood passes out to the air. As the sweat evaporates, it gives you a cool feeling. This is how the skin regulates body temperature. Do you know why you shiver when you feel cold? The muscles in the skin contract to generate heat. It is another way for your body to regulate the temperature. Your sebaceous or oil glands produce sebum that lubricates the skin. Hair follicles are regions where hair grows. Each hair follicle has a pain receptor that senses pain when you pull out a hair. Lastly, we have the hypodermis. The hypodermis is the inner layer of the skin. It is mainly for fat storage that insulates the body to make sure that you stay warm. Let's now move on to the common ailments of the integumentary system. The skin is a barrier that protects you from the several factors like heat, pain, pressure, dirt, and microorganisms. Exposure to these factors may lead to skin disorders. So first, we'll start with acne. Acne is an inflammation of an oil gland that shows up as a bump on the skin. Bumps may be a pimple, blackhead, or whitehead. The oil glands are usually overreactive during puberty or adolescence. As a result, excessive oil or sebum is produced. Pores become clogged with bacteria. Now, bacteria multiplying inside the pores cause the swelling and redness. The second one is a boil or what we call furuncle. 
refers to the infection in the hair follicle or sweat gland caused by the bacteria Staphylococcus aureus. The bacteria enters the body through tiny breaks or cuts in the skin and travel down the hair to the follicle. Boils are characterized by a hard, red, painful lump. After four to seven days, the lump starts turning white to yellow as a pus collect under the skin. The third one is athlete's foot. It's a fungal disease of the skin of the foot. It is usually scaly, red, and itchy. A trichophyton or a fungi is commonly found on floors and clothing. A person may acquire this when he walks barefooted on a contaminated surface or by using towels, socks, and shoes of an infected person. The fourth one is an-an, or what we call a tinea versicolor. Now, these things is a fungal infection caused by a yeast. The overgrowth of yeast leads to rashes on the skin. This condition also involves the discoloration of the affected area brought by the acidic bleach from the yeast. Second to the last is burn. Burn is a lesion of the skin caused by heat, chemicals, electricity, or sun exposure. Burn may range from first degree or minimal damage to third degree or extensive damage. Lastly, we have melanoma. Melanoma is a type of skin cancer that develops in the melanocytes of the epidermis. It usually develops in the areas that are overexposed to the sun. Too much of the ultraviolet rays radiation from the sun destroys normal skin and causes them to quickly divide, grow, and attack the tissues around them. Since we talked about the common ailments of the integumentary system, here are ways to properly care for the integumentary system. So how do you keep your skin healthy? With good habits, you can maintain a healthy glowing skin. The first one is to avoid exposing yourself to too much sunlight. According to the National Library of Medicine, UV rays are the strongest from 10 o'clock a.m. in the morning to 2 o'clock p.m. in the afternoon. It is better to stay indoors to avoid exposure. Now, when going out for a swim or during a hot weather, make sure that you have the right protection for your skin. Apply sunscreen and wear long sleeves to prevent too much exposure and absorption of the UV rays. You may also use an umbrella or wear sun visors. So the third one is you have to eat vegetables, fruits, which is rich in vitamin C and E, like orange, apples, kiwis, strawberries, and pineapples. That will make your skin healthy. A balanced diet will also provide the energy and raw materials needed for growth and repair of the skin cells. So number four is to hydrate your skin, not only just by drinking eight glasses of water a day, but also taking a bath. So the fifth one is observe proper hygiene to ensure a cleaner and healthier skin. Proper hygiene refers to the practice of cleanliness as a step to good health. Proper hygiene includes the use of mild cleaning agents like bath soaps, facial wash, and shampoos. Washing your face before going to bed and taking a bath every day prevents bacterial growth and infection. These steps also control oilness of the skin. So lastly, we have sleep. Have 9 to 12 hours of sleep to allow your body to repair damages on your skin. Repairing the damage makes your skin glow healthier. So that's it for the proper care of the integumentary system. So as we go back, the human body has what we call one of the systems called the integumentary system, which consists of the hair, skin, and nail. Now the skin has three layers called the epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. If you have questions about the topic, feel free to type it in the comments below. If you learned something today, don't forget to like this video and if you're interested in more educational videos to come, click that subscribe and notification bell to be notified on the latest videos. I'll see you guys on my next video. And don't forget, you are your only limit.